Hello everyone. Welcome to the next training of SAP FICO module. Today we'll be covering the cost center planning. In the last training session we have completed the cost center accounting. Now within cost center accounting how we can plan different expenses that is what all about is cost center planning. In today's topic we'll be covering an introduction on cost center planning configuration steps and you can say the reports as well as you can say the unit testing part. So moving on to the introduction on cost center planning. Cost center planning is handled differently in almost every business organizations. The type of industry, organizational structures and responsibilities are factored affecting planning. Cost center planning is required to segregate the expected cost with respect to each cost center. Cost center planning facilitates you to plan the cost at each cost center level and the output expected to be generated at that cost center. Cost centers are planned for specific inter a specific time frames usually for one fiscal year but also for fiscal quarters or even for period to period. Cost center planning is divided into following planning areas. One is cost element planning, another is activity type planning. So in a nutshell cost center planning basically refers to the planning of different expenses which are incurred or different costs which have been incurred in any organization that may be related to manufacturing or related to administrative expenses or selling and distribution expenses whatever it may be. You can plan those expenses as per the management and then once when the transactions have been over for that period the planning can be compared with the actual cost which has been incurred. So this gives you the management an overview or a better reporting perspective so as to decide where the actual expenses have been exceeded, where are the variances in the cost and how the cost has increased or decreased for that particular product manufacture. So this is how the cost center planning works. Now moving on to the configuration steps, there are simple basic steps, one is to define the version, then defining the planning layout and define planning profile. If you move to the first part define version, the path is on your screen, this is the same maintain version which we have defined in the basic settings of controlling area in the first training session of SAP controlling. We need to go and revisit the same version whether it has been maintained for cost center planning or not. So let's move on to the SAP system so as to have a look as of how we can define the version for cost center planning. So we have both the options of moving up with the path as well as the transaction code as you can see on your screen. So let's move up with the path. The path first we have to execute the transaction SPRO enter. Then we need to go to SAP reference IMG and in that we need to go to controlling. Then moving on to controlling we need to go to cost center accounting and then planning. So cost center accounting and within cost center accounting there is planning. And you can see within planning there is basic settings for planning and defined version. So this is basic setting for planning and then there is a defined version option available to you. So we can execute this defined version over here. And now you can see on your screen there are two options. One is to create authorization group for versions and second is to maintain settings for versions in controlling area. So we can move on to the second part that is maintain settings for versions in controlling area. We can double click on that so as to maintain the version. So the version we have already created. We need to define the controlling area over here that is Z100 enter. 
So you can see the message over there. Background is still the data can be displayed only. So we can have a look on the display part. So you can see over here now, this is the version which we have created. So what you need to go and cross check is that this plan box has been activated or not. If it has been activated, that is what you are required. If you want cost center planning to be done, in that case you need to activate this plan checkbox. So that is what you need to check or activate this part. You need to go and cross check whether this particular version is active or not. And again, if you double click onto this version over here, any of this in this particular row, it will take you to the detail uh, what the version contains within. So double click onto the version. Okay, it doesn't say anything. Okay, we can select this version from over here and then we can move to settings for fiscal year so once I double click on to that you can see and we have moved to the next screen and this is a screen in front to you these are the fiscal year which has to be maintained the same thing which we did in the uh, defining the version in controlling area basic setting part so this is what you need to revisit whether the plan part has been activated over here or not so if this has been activated it's all right else you have to activate this you have to select this option and once selected it will be activated and you need to save it so moving back this is what you need to go and you need to cross check in the system that is the part of defining the version moving to the next step now is defining planning layout the layout represents the options the user has on the screen when entering the plan data. It is important that planning layout are user friendly and the planner have input into the functionality and the configurations. During the cost center planning or you can say the cost planning, users enter information into the SAP through the use of planning layout that is this planning layout we are discussing all about the layout represents the options the user has on the screen for entering the data the choices may include activities cost elements key key figures and some combinations of all of the three additionally the layout may limit the version or period a user can plan so you can you can limit the the layout till a particular period or to a particular version as well. Layouts provide you with a tool to tailor the planning environment to meet your exact business requirement. So normally what happens is the management plan before manufacturing that what will be the cost on different expenses and they bifurcate those planning amount to all those expenses uh, that is what is termed as the planning environment which they do so as to meet their actual cost so that the cost doesn't exceed beyond that so it is important that planning layout are user friendly and the planners have input into the functionality and the configuration as said in, in most of the cases the planner have been working in the excel based environment what they do is they do all their working related to the planning of different cost or different expenses in an Excel sheet and later on they want that to be uploaded into the SAP system as a plan data. So that can even be done if you prepare that particular plan data in an Excel sheet in a particular prescribed format that particular format can be uploaded into the Excel and the planning data can be uploaded into the SAP system for cost planning in a very very uh, short period of time and no manual activities are required for that. So SAP delivers a number of planning layouts with the software that will meet the majority of your planning needs. So let's see what are the different planning layouts SAP has provided and how we can create our own planning layout for cost element planning. So as said, there are two layouts of going for a cost planning. One is cost element planning. Another, another based is activity type planning. So we will be covering the cost element planning, which is basically used in most of the industries. 
So moving to the SAP screen now, we first need to go to the same cost center accounting and then to the planning. So the path is there in cost center accounting, there is manual planning and then user defined planning layout. So the planning refers to the same uh, manual planning. So we can expand this planning over here and once we expand the planning, within planning you can find manual planning. So you can expand the manual planning here and once expanded you can see there is an option of user defined planning layout. So this is over here the path manual planning then user defined planning layout. So that is over here user defined planning layout. We can expand this tab. So once expanded you will find three options by which planning can be done for cost planning. One is cost element planning, another is activity type planning and third is a statistical key figure planning. So we will be moving to the create planning layout for cost element planning. This is the first option and by which we will be planning for the cost in the SAP system. So we need to execute this tab over here now. Once we have executed, you will find two options over here. Create planning layout for cost planning or change planning layout for cost planning. So if you want to create a planning layout for yourself, you need to go to create planning layout, double click on it. So once we double click, it takes you to the next screen and here you can create your own planning layout from very much from the scratch or else there is another option you can go back and you can change the planning layout or you can copy an existing planning layout and you can make the needful changes to that planning as well. So what you need to do is to review the SAP delivered planning layout before building your own it will be helpful to copy an existing layout rather than developing one from the scratch as that will be more complicated to understand. So if you move to the change planning layout, double click onto the change just to have a look of the different planning layout provided by SAP. Double click on it and you can see there are different list of different plannings as on the screen to you. These are the different planning layouts provided by SAP. If you want planning by cost element, you can go with this. If you want activity input planning, you can go with this. You can want process input and a lot of such options are there, central planning. So these are a lot of options which are available on the system to you. Now what you can do is you can copy any of these or you can go to create your own as well. So what we would be doing is we will not be copying anything because that will be more easier to do. We will be creating a planning layout for cost planning from scratch. So for that we need to go to the first option that is create planning layout. So double click on to the create planning layout. Now here you need to assign your own layout number or a code which you want to give it to. Suppose I give it as Z101 cost element planning as a name to it so now we need to go to create option over here once you have given the layout a name to itself and a code we can move to the next that is to create so once I click on to the create option now now you can see a new screen has came up on the screen and in this screen we need to go to click add it over here on the screen and in add it we need to go to general data selections. So within general data selections now you will find that there is a general selection, general data selection as well further. 
So we need to go to this general data selection over here and have to click on to this. So I went to this add it. Then I went to general data selection and within general data selection you have to go to general data selection further. So once I click on to this general data selection now you will see a new screen has came up on your screen that is a new tab that is element definition. Now in this you need to select the characteristics which has to be selected for planning. So the characteristics to be selected are one is version which you need to select. Next is period for planning, fiscal year for which fiscally you are going to plan and the planning will be done at the cost center level. So we need to select the cost center. So these are the four different things which we have to select. Now once we have selected these, so these are the different characteristics which we will be using in a while for creating the characteristic values. So let's move on to the next now. We can close that tab. Now we have not done anything with that particular options. Now well, what we need to go is we need to go to this lead column over here on the screen as you can see. We need to put the cursor on uh, double click on that particular lead column over here. So once we double click onto it, it will give you a list of options. Out of that list of options, we need to select the cost element. Why? Because we are going for cost planning with cost element. So the planning will be done with the help of cost element where all the expenses are assigned to a cost element because all the expenses ledger have a cost element. So the planning will be done on the basis of different segregated expenses or the cost. So we need to select this cost element and we need to take it on the other side. So we can move it from the right side to the left side with this option of arrow. Move select to left. So once we have selected this to the other side now you can see the cost element has been moved from the right side to the left side over here on the screen. Now we need to select this option first that is to set our hierarchy node. So we need to select this hierarchy. Second you need to go to variable on and off. So we need to select the variable over here. Once we have selected the variable now you will find that from their list of options. So there is one that is an option which has been taken. So that is what you need to take over here. So once you have selected cost element from the right to left and then you have selected the hierarchy over here and then the variable on off and then from one will be there. That is the local variable and now we can move to confirm option. So once we go and click on to the confirm now the system gives a new pop-up screen to you so as to decide the lead column will be a characteristics value or will be a name or a characteristics value and name or name and characteristics value. So you need to decide out of these what you need to select as with. So what you need to select out of these are characteristics value and name. So it is what we have selected over here on the screen and once you have selected you can go and click on to confirm or enter. So once entered you can see on the screen now that the lead column has been replaced by cost element option over here on the screen. So this is what the first part which has been done. Now moving on to the next is that you need to move on to the next column over here that is column 1 as you can see over here on the screen. Column 1 is written as a description. So we need to double click on to this column 1. So once you double click on to this column 1 now be careful you need to move slowly to understand these steps to create your planning layout. So we, we need to double click on to the column 1. Now once I double click now you will see a new pop-up screen has been generated. So once this pop-up screen has been generated now you will find that there are key figures on the screen at the top. There are a number of different key figures if you go for having a look of the list of different key figures we can click on to F4 and can have the list. You can see that there are different list of key figures. So the key figures which we need to select out of these is 
total plan cost in object currency that is C the PWOG so we need to double click on to this and we need to select this over here on the screen so it will be replaced by the existing key figure to the total plan cost in object currency once this has been done now we need to move on directly to confirm so once you click on to the confirm option over here the system you can see that it has been replaced with total plan cost object currency so once you have done that and the name has been replaced from column 1 to total plan cost object currency now you need to so now once we are done with the column 1 which has been replaced with total plan cost object currency now we need to move to the next column so the next column will be next to this over here or you can take any of them over here on the screen so from moving from this to this now we can double click over here so as to add one more column so once you double click onto this you will double click on this you will see a new top pop-up screen has been generated I hope you understand that what you need to do is you need to move from this column to the next column and you have to double click onto this column so once I double click over here a new pop-up screen has been generated and out of this pop-up screen you need to select the element type so there are three different element types on the screen as of now key figure with characteristics formula and attributes now what we need to take out of these is the attribute now attribute attributes provide additional flexibility to the planning screens by defining in the greater detail the quantity or dollar amount being planned attribute values include among others unit exchange rate type action and distribution key by adding the attribute action to the planning screen the user would have the ability to determine whether the amount being planned should be replaced be added or be subtracted from any existing amounts but if the attributes were not present the system would default with the replace options so we'll be selecting this attribute over here and we'll move to confirm or enter on the screen so it will take you to the next screen now as you can see that in attribute there are different options so attributes can have the unit distribution key action exchange rate type value date quantity and a lot of different options in it so out of these all what you need to select now is the distribution key now selecting the distribution key is important because for the distribution key only the fiscal year field must be maintained recall that the fiscal year was defined in the general data selection and is not visible in this window so we need to take this distribution key and this distribution key value will be good for all the columns what the distribution key does is it divides the value the plan value in equal periods so we'll be selecting this distribution key over here and we'll click on to the confirm option or enter so once we click on to the enter now you can see a new pop-up screen again has been generated in front of you now out of these and then I have clicked on to the confirm and once I clicked on to the confirm you can see now that the distribution option has been generated over here on the screen to you similarly you can add further more columns double click on the next column select the attributes then enter and then over here again you need to select the distribution key so once you select the distribution key or even you can take something else as well if you need if you want text to be taken you can take text over here 
once you take in the text and confirm on the enter again it takes you to the next screen so as to element definition text exist and you can confirm this part and now a new column will be added for text as well so similarly you need to create your own layout that how your layout is and how you want your planning layout to be defined as so that is what you need to do this is your your layout which has been defined in somehow uh, just to give you an overview of how you can design your own layout with the help of this and once this has been done now what you need to do is you need to move on to this option over here on the top that is check split plus six so you need to click on to this check report we will which will check whether these all layout ha is okay or not and there is no issues with the particular layout so once I click on to this check option over here you will see now there are certain errors with the system has been giving to us and once this layout is defined and this checkbox shows OK we can move on and you can save the screen and it will be saved so this is how you need to create your own layout so creating a new layout is always a time taking process there are a lot of issues in that which you need to look for so uh, I am just giving an overview which you can try and you can create your own planning layout you can save it ok so moving on to the next part now is or else what we can do is we can create an, a standard layout as well as defined in the SAP system as we have checked so there are a number of different layouts you can see this layout over here which is uh, already defined 101 you can display that over here with the display options so we can double click on that and let's see so you can see over here once you double click onto this cost element first part it shows you the layout activities cost element plan fixed value this is the distribution key then again planned value then again distribution key then plan value so similarly you can create your own layout as well different layouts are there or else you can do one thing is you can even copy this and you can create your own as well so this is how we will be creating a layout you can try and create the layout for yourself in most of the scenarios what we do is we use a standard layout normally if the 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 layout is somewhat different from the standard SAP layouts in that case you need to move and you have to create your own layout and for that you must know how a report painter works so what we will be using is we will be using a standard layout that is 1-101 uh, how to create I have just given an overview that you can try and you can create of your own so moving up to the next now is uh, we are done with the planning layout now moving on to the next is planning profile planning is based on predefined planning layout in the standard system which are saved in planner profiles planning layouts are entry screens for planning they are subdivided into planning areas such as cost element or activity type planning or statistical key figures depending upon which of the options the company want to proceed with so the planning profile within SAP marry a planning layout to an appropriate area of planning for a as said for example cost centers orders or profitability analysis there are four different standard profile with the software that SAP has provided for planning profile as well the majority of the planning profile which is used let's see on the SAP system so which will give you a better idea so moving to the path in this particular case now again is we need to go to SPRO first so we need to go to the same planning part to controlling and that cost center accounting in that you need to go to planning and within planning we need to go to the define user define plan and profile okay we need to go to manual planning so here you can see define user define plan and profile 
So this is, we can execute this uh, configuration step over here. So once we are executing this particular step, now you can see these are the different profiles which are created by a number of different peoples, but you can see these are the four which have been provided by standard SAP to be used for different planning purposes. So the one is SAP 101, that is, that is known as for primary cost, activity type and statistical key figures. The next is SAP 102, that is for activity input, activity type and a statistical key figure. So the third is 103 and the fourth is 104. Now the most commonly used is 101 because whenever the planning is done, it is done with respect to the primary cost elements. So if you look to this, there are these three parts which make you understand the thing. Planning, primary cost element, then activity type, statistical key figure. The next is with activity input and the third one is with revaluation. Fourth one is for secondary order cost. So this is the one which is mostly used that is SAP 101. So that is what majority of CO planning requirements are covered with the profile SAP 101. To use the layout it must be assigned to a planning profile. During the planning process the profile is set prior to the data entry. So how we can set that? We, that is what we will be looking forward to this in this particular step. So what we will be doing now is we will be creating our own profile by selecting this SAP 101. We will copy this profile for, for using for our own planner profile and we will be renaming it with a Z for creating our own profile in the system. So let's click on, once we have selected this over here, SAP 101, we can move to copy. Once we click on the copy, now we can rename it, we can assign a Z in front of that so that it can be created for our own profile and we can rename the description as well as you wish to. So this is your planning cost. Okay, you want you can rename it as uh, primary cost oblique activity types and status tickle key figure. So once you have created a copy and you have put the description onto this now you have to enter on the screen so once you enter okay an entry already exists under the system so let's uh, create it as Z SAP 100 enter so once entered now you can see that it will copy all the details from the S standard SAP 101 to Z SAP 100 so we have created a profile ZSAP100. You can see the data has been copying from the layout. And now the message is generated. Number of dependent entries copied is 39. So once this has been copied now, what we need to do is we need to select the same profile now. Sorry, once we have copied over here, we need to save this layout first of all. Sorry, the profile. First we have to save the profile. So once the profile has been saved, now the next step is to select the same profile over here and then we need to go to general controlling. Double click on to the general controlling. So once you double click on to the general controlling, it gives you the whole list of different planning areas which the planning profile exists. And out of these all general planning areas, as, uh, as you can see on the screen, which we will be using is the first one that is cost center, cost element, activity inputs. So we need to select this first option and then we have to move to the next part that is layout for controlling. 
so we need to double click we need to select the planning area first that is cost center cost element activity inputs and then we need to move on to the layout for controlling double click on to the layout for controlling so once you double click on to this it will take you to the next screen now as you can see on the system so once you move to this screen now what you need to do is you can see number of options over here layout description uh, this is uh, these are three options over here as in your screen so what we need to do over here, one is a default, another is overview, next is integration, integrated Excel and the next part is file description. So what you need to do is you need to select the options out of this. So what you are, you are supposed to do is you need to, you have the option of creating your own layout now what we can do in this part is you need to select this overview <coughs> overwrite actually and in case you want the planning data to be uploaded with the help of an excel sheet in that case you need to go to this option of integrated excel as you can see so the integrated excel you have to activate this part and you have to name the excel file as a description and you have to take care that whatever the description you assigned over here the same description you have to you have to maintain the file with the same description as well so we'll not be going with this option as of now we'll be just uh, moving on with the manual planning right now so you just need to select this option over here to overwrite once you have selected this now we can save the screen over here and your layout has been sorry your planning layout layout or the planning profile both has been assigned to each other so you can see this this is a planning profile and this is the layout basically so the layout is 1101 and the layout has been assigned now with the profile so this is what we have been talking about that in this particular step you need to assign a layout to your planning profile without assigning a layout to the planning profile you cannot go for the planning cost center planning in it so now we have saved this screen that means the planning profile configuration steps have been covered and now we can move to the next part now that is uh, moving to the unit testing so these were the three basic configuration steps uh, that is one is to maintain the version the next was the planning layout and the third one is to planning profile which has been covered and now we can move to the unit testing part where we will be creating certain cost centers and we will be maintaining certain planning values with respect to cost element into the system and we'll see how the various reports look like once you maintain the planning values for the cost and what are the different actual costs which are posted into the system and how you can have different reports on the basis of that so we'll be now moving on to the unit testing there are different number of transactions on your screen like to create the cost center changing cost element activity input planning then displaying the planning cost element you can copy plan to plan data from one year to the another year and even you can lock and unlock the periods for the same as well and there are various reports for the planning overview the actual versus the plan cost comparisons variance cost center and cost element wise that means different cost center with different expenses you can have the report you can compare the reports for planning from one period to another periods so there are huge different number of transactions as per the business requirement which are as needed in any of the businesses so moving to these unit testing transactions one by one first we'll be moving to the cost center so we'll create a cost center in the system however we have already created number of different cost centers when we once we did the cost center accounting but yet we'll be creating one more cost center which will not be having any value in it and we'll be easily able to have a look how uh, that works so moving to the SAP screen to create the cost center the transaction code is KS01 KS01 
So as already discussed, cost center is an organizational unit within a controlling that represents a clearly delimited area of responsibility where the costs are monitored against a plan value or a budgeted value. The cost incurred by the organization should be transparent and uh, that is why we have different reports for that and different cost centers are there by which you can you can have a look of all these different costs which are incurred. So moving on to this what you need to do is you need to assign a cost center number over here which you want to create so if you want to see you can go for the list of different cost center which are already defined into the system so you can have a look this is the cost center which is already created similarly you can create one more cost center or maybe couple of more cost centers accordingly now this cost center was created for production related things now you can create cost centers for for admin for selling and distribution expenses uh, maybe for other purposes like HR expenses and all as you wish to so suppose I create a cost center now with 110010 I have to put the valid date from and to uh, from when it will be valid and to what date it will be valid so I will be taking this as one uh, from December 2014 now I can now enter onto the screen once I have assigned the cost number which I would be creating and the valid date from and to enter on the screen so once entered it take you to the next screen that is the master data screen where I will be putting the basic settings onto the master data so suppose I take the first cost center over here as a even in one department there could be more than number of different expenses or different cost centers like uh, suppose I take an admin in within admin I can take travel or you can say transport can be one of the cost center same can be created over here and now the person responsible you can name a person who is will be responsible over here suppose uh, Andy is one guy who is responsible for the admin part and then you can assign the department over here as well like admin and then we can move to the cost center category you can select the category from over here so the different categories are there and we can select out of that so these are the number of different categories so I would be taking this administration because I am creating a cost center for the admin department so that has been taken now we can take the standard hierarchy so the standard hierarchy will be taken up by the system of its own because the hierarchy is only one in the system so once you click on to this F4 or this option it will take the hierarchy of its own as you can see on your screen then we can move on to the business area in case there is any business area and you want that cost center should be specifically for that particular business area then in that case you can assign the business area over here as well else you can leave it blank and we can move to the next is the currency that is USD dollars and then we'll be taking the profit center so if you remember we have divided the profit center cost centers in three different parts that is plant one plant two and plant three and we even have discussed in cost center accounting in the last training session that the cost center which is starting with one refers to plant one and the profit center which is starting with the with one refers to the plant one profit center so in this case the cost center starts with one that means the it refers to the plant one so we'll be taking the profit center for plant one so let's see the list of different profit centers in it enter so these are the different profit centers we can take the profit center first one as one one zero 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 and that has been taken up over here and now we can save the screen and your cost center has been created 
so this is how you need to create your own cost center once we have done with this particular transaction now we'll be moving to the next that is change cost element activity input planning the transaction code is kp06 so in this particular part we'll be now moving to the planning so in this primary cost planning on cost center is done with respect to overall business planning processes the planning cost include expenses such as salaries wages power and fuel engineering expenses or cost traveling expenses so all different kind of an expenses which are a part of the primary organization this transaction is used to capture the planned cost to the relevant cost centers so how we will be doing this now let's move on to the transaction kp06 kp06 enter so in this particular part the prerequisite is that that you need a cost center and you need a cost element then only you can create uh, the planning for the cost element part so you must be knowing even we have discussed earlier that every expense ledger has a respective cost element in controlling area so there is if there is a salary ledger account the same salary ledger account number will have a cost element as well in the controlling part with the same gl number or the ledger account number so if the that particular cost element has to be planned in that case you need the cost element number for that particular expense so what do you need to do over here now in this particular part is you need to maintain the version over here so you can select the from the list of different versions on the system so the version we need to take is zero as there is only one version created then you need to decide the period for which you want the planning to be done you can plan it for one particular period you can plan it for quarter you can plan it for the whole fiscal year as you want to so suppose i want to plan for the whole year for the whole fiscal year i will be taking the period from 1 to 12 then i will be taking the fiscal year that is 2014 <coughs> sorry and then you need to take the cost center and the another part you need to take is the cost element so let's take the cost element what are the different list of cost element from that the chart of account is 1000 enter so you can have a look these are the different cost element which are already created and these are the different ledgers also if you check in the ledger accounting fa part these are the different ledger number created in the fa module as well so suppose i take one of these like i take i want to go for a planning of rent so i take the rent cost element over here now on the screen so i have taken the rent i have taken the cost center that is admin transport and admin transport this is what you need to take you have taken the version the period fiscal year cost center and then the cost element so once these options have been taken now we need to move on to the next that is we need to go to this overview screen once you click on to the overview screen now it will take you to the next screen so once clicked on to this okay it says the cost center this is not supported in all the periods because this particular cost center is created in the month of december so it will allow us from the 10th period to 12th period so we can now go for an overview so you can see now on the screen that this particular cost center and this is the expense that is sell this is rent so if you want to go for planning of rent for particular cost center you can put a value and this is valid for a period from 10 to 12 that is for a quarter the last quarter and you can put any plan value for the first uh, the the last quarter that is the three months so suppose i put it over here as one two zero 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 as twelve thousand dollars as the plan fixed cost for rent what will be the actual rent that can be compared once the transaction in the financial accounting will be covered so this is what you can take over here on the screen once you have taken this now you can move on and you can save the screen over here 
So even if you want, you can go back and you can even change the plan value as well. So if you see over here on the screen, there are the distribution keys as well. So the distribution keys, if you take, there are a number of different distribution keys. Now if you want this particular planned cost of $12,000 to be divided in monthly basis to each of the period, you need to take equal distribution, that is 1. So in that case, it will be distributed equally on the basis of the periods. If you want it to be distributed on the basis of the percentage, then you have to take the distribution key as 3. And if you want to distribute it manually, in that case, you need to take it as 0. So I would be taking it as 1 so that it will be equally distributed among the three different periods. So that is what uh, you need to take care of, the cost and the distribution key. Now we can go and we can save this screen and your layout has been, your planning value has been now taken up for that particular cost element. Similarly, if you want, you can again go for, with the same cost center, you can define number of different cost element as well, like we can take the range. Suppose I want to plan for all the cost elements. In that case, I can take the list from this to this, whatever the cost centers are there, that will be taken up on the screen. So we can now, from and two cost element can be taken and in one go, you can plan for all whatever the different cost element are on the, on the system. So now in that case again you can go to overview and you can see that uh, there is as of now only one cost element as on the screen that has been reflected. If you want you can take further over here like 40005. Similarly you can plan for 40006 as well. And you can take the value over here. Suppose I plan it for 10,000, I plan it for 5,000. Enter. So even that you can plan it over here as well. And you can save this screen. So in one particular cost center, there could be different number of cost element. Why? Because one particular cost center like admin transport, in transport only there could be rent, there could be uh, transportation expenses, there could be salaries involved, wages involved, a lot of different expenses are involved. So all those expenses are taken up as a cost element on this screen and can be maintained for the plan value. So you can save the screen and the plan value is maintained. So this is how you can maintain the, the different cost center plan value with respect to the cost element with the transaction KP06. Now if you want to go back and you want to display the particular plan planned value that can be done with KP07. So this will only display you the transactions value KP07. You can see over here on the screen and you can go to the overview but you cannot change it over here now mind it. So you can see over here these are the different cost element for which we have planned with respect to the cost center that is admin transport and one is $12,000 $10,000, $5,000, the total cast cost element planned with respect to the cost center is $27,000. So moving to the next now is copy plan to plan. During the annual planning process, the last year's plan figures can be copied to the next year's plan as well as expediting the process, the copied plan value can then be used as a basis to develop a new plan as well. So for that, we need to go to the transaction KP97 so as to copy the last year's plan to the current year fiscal year plan. So let's execute the transaction KP27. Moving to the SAP system, KP97. Enter. So once you entered, you can see on the screen there are different parameters cost center, cost element, selection variant, or if you want to copy all of the cost centers planning value, in that case, you need to select to select all cost centers. 
and if you want to copy the limited cost centers value then you can put the range from in 2 as well else we can move to all cost centers so when you want to copy the, the plan value from the last year to the current year you should select all cost center as a basis and then moving on to the next that is the template plan so in the template plan the version you need to select is 0 the period you have to define that for what period you want to copy you want to copy the data for a particular period for a quarter or for the whole year that depends up to you how you want to transfer the data or copy the data suppose I transfer it for the whole year that is 1 to 12 period then you can define the fiscal year over here suppose I define the fiscal year as 2012 or sorry 2013 and the target will be to which we will be copying it to so over here we need to put the period again and the fiscal year 2014 and then you need to move on to the next that is all plan data then template cost center and do not change is all right and the structure without values is all right test run and detail so this is what the parameters which you have to fill so as to copy the cost planning from one fiscal year to the another fiscal year so once you have filled all these details now you need to go to the option over here that is selections so you need to go to this selections over here on the screen so once you click on to the selections now it asks you the cost center okay no problem we can move to the next selection part so this is it so you need to go to the the plan data selection option over here for all plan data the selections option over here on the screen and click on to the selection over here and you will find the number of different parameters been defined like for primary cost secondary cost other plan data like activities statistical key figures so you need to decide whether you want to copy all of those planning values to the current fiscal year or you want to restrict certain out of them like we need to restrict the revenues because we are only planning for the cost not for the revenue so we don't need the revenues we can exclude the revenues option from over here the rest of the options can be copied from the last fiscal year to the current fiscal year and now we can move on to the enter button that is selected now the changes to the parameters has been done and then now we can move to the next so this is what you need to do and now we can move on to click on to the radio button to execute this so once you click on to the execute it asks you that the version 0 is not defined for the period 2013 because the version 0 has been created only in the fiscal year 2014 so that is what you need to take and over here we can take it as 15 okay now we can execute the options so once executing now you can see on the screen the data has been displayed to you these are the different object types there are actually four data which has been copied on the screen as you can see and these are the four data which will be copied to 2015 for this part so that is what you need to do you need to copy the data in this particular way out and now we can we have executed this in the test run part similarly we can execute this in the actual uh, actual part as well with taking the test run off so you can move on to the back again yes and now we can we can take off this test run and we can execute this transaction again and then the whole uh, the value of plan data will be copied from one fiscal year to the next fiscal year so executing it again now so once executed you can see now again now the processing status has been changed from test run to update run and 
it has been updated with the four records why because as of now on the system there are only four cost element from whom the planning has been done these three are for the cost center and the last one is for the internal order part so this is what the data has been copied and the similar manner you need to copy if you want to copy the cost planning from one fiscal year to the another fiscal year so that is it for planning for copying the planning now we can move to the next and go back so now moving up to the next transaction is period lock unlock the transaction code for period lock unlock is okp1 now use the period lock to lock the plan in the actual business transactions for a combination of controlling areas fiscal year and version to prevent further postings so in case you want or the organization wants that uh, no transactions to be posted to a particular version in controlling or a particular fiscal year then in that case you can go and you can lock that fiscal year or that particular period in the fiscal year so this works this work instruction illustrate locking the actual postings for the period as well so it it restricts you from posting the planning transactions as well as the posting transactions both how we can do that let's move on to the sap screen and have a look for the transaction so if the transaction is okay p1 okay p1 enter so it asks you for three parameters one is controlling area next is fiscal year and the version so it asks you for the fiscal year because for which fiscal year you want to restrict it and as well as one particular controlling area can have more than one version so you need to define for which particular version you want to put the restriction on the controlling area so once you have taken this now we can go to actual so they have both the options you want to restrict or lock the period for actual transaction or you want to lock the period for planned transactions so i would be restricting it for actual now once you move on you can see on the screen there are different list of different activities on the screen and these are the different period from 1 to 16 so in this whichever period you want to lock you can go and you can select that particular option like i want to restrict the month of 10th period that is the or you can say as 9th period that is december 2014 fiscal year so you can select all of these list as on the screen and what will happen is you will not be able to post any co transactions within the co module because what we are doing is which are restricting all of these for the period 9 so for the period 9 means the for the period of december 2014 you will not be able to post any transactions in the system so this is how the period can be locked and if you want to unlock that period you need to come back again over here and you have to take this check box off and in that case it will be deactivated that means the posting will be allowed so as of now we have selected these and we can save this screen over here so once it will be saved that means you will not be able to post any transactions related to controlling actual transactions related to controlling into the system so once saved you will see that period locks for control area z100 have been changed now you want to make the changes again you need to again go back to the same screen actuals and you can see these are the options you can go and you can select this and you can unlock this period as well so we have selected all together and now go to this unlock period and it will unlock the periods <coughs> so you can see all the list all the tick marks have been taken off that means again the period has been unlocked for posting the actual transactions in the controlling module and you can save this screen so this is how you can lock and unlock the period for controlling transactions even for actuals as well as for the planned data similarly you can do the same activity for 
the planning transactions as well as on the screen so this is how your period lock unlock works so these are the different unit testing transactions which we have seen now we'll be having a look on few of the reports in cost center planning which will be helpful for you in different ways now moving to the first report that is cost center planning overview the transaction code for that is ksbl So moving on to the SAP system, KSBL, enter. So once you take this, you need to select the cost center over here. If you want to have the planning report for that particular cost center from period to period. If you want to have it from first period, you can take period 1 to 12. And you need to select the cost center over here. So as to have the planning report for that particular cost center. So this particular report is for a particular cost center reporting purpose for planning and now you can move it. we have selected the cost center we need to select the fiscal year then the plan period for which we want the planning report and the version and then the output in alv grid now we can execute it <coughs> so once you execute the transaction you can see on the screen that it shows you the different cost elements details and it shows you that the value in the co company code currency is this is the 12,000, 10,000 and then 5,000. These are actually the plan values, mind it, because this is the planning report. So the plan value for component cost element that is rent is $12,000, loss on sale of assets is $10,000, then depreciation on building is $5,000, the total primary cost planning is $27,000 as on the screen. So this is used for the planning overview which will give you the all the planning overview with respect to one particular cost center. So one particular cost center can have a number of different cost element that is you can plan for different expenses within the cost center that is what the detail has been provided. Now we can move to the next report. This report is very very helpful. S underscore ALR underscore 870-13611. The report is about the actual and the plan variances in the cost center. So executing this report. So this is it. You need to select the cost controlling area. Fiscal year for which you want to have the report. Then the period for which you want to have it, you can have it for from 1 to 12 period. You can even have it from 10 to 12 period. You can have it for one particular period as well, 10 to 10 as well. So this is what you need to take it over here. The selection groups are not mandatory. If you want the reporting for different cost center group or element group wise, you can take that also. Else you can execute it for all the cost centers. So once you execute this report, it will give you the output in as on the screen you will find that the cost center these are the different cost element so this reports gives you the basically the cost element wise planned and actual data so you can see there is no actual cost involved in this because with respect to these different cost element as of now no actual transaction has been posted in the SAP system but if you go for the plan part, we have maintained this planning value if you remember in the, in the same training session in a while back. And you can see the total variance is now from 0 to 12,000 is 12,000. So 100% variance is there as of now. And this is how your actual plan variance report is displayed to you. This displays you the cost element wise plan value. That means expenses wise plan value but suppose I want to have and even if you want to bifurcate these in the group wise then you can even select these groups there are two groups as of now one is production and one is admin these are sorry two cost centers so if I want to have the cost center wise cost element reporting even that can be generated over here so you can go for that also with the options as you can see on the screen when I click on the admin transport, it shows me the admin related cost element. If you go for the production wise cost center report, it will show me the 
production that is the cost center this is the cost center that is production and within production these there is no plan value or actual values but if you move on you will find the actual this is the statistical okay statistical value as well that is for the information purpose so this is how you can execute your actual plan report over here as well so every report has got some or the other differences with each other which will give you some or the other benefits which you need for the reporting purpose now moving up to the next report is s underscore alr underscore eight seven zero one three six one two now the same this report is again for cost center actual plan comparison if you execute this report the screen layout is similar to that which we have executed the last one we can execute this report over here now so once you execute you can see the detail but this report has a difference that the last report was that you are finding the cost elements in that but now I am finding the cost centers in it and in this particular cost center the cost center of production has an actual cost of forty thousand dollars however there is no plan cost in that whereas the cost cost center of admin has got no actual cost expenses booked but there are a plan cost planning of twenty seven thousand dollars and if you take the the total of that the total actual is forty thousand dollar and the plan is twenty seven thousand dollar so actually the variance is of thirteen thousand dollar which is around forty eight percent of variance between the plan and the actual similarly you can move to the next report of cost center cost element wise report so if you move to the next report now, this is about S underscore ALA underscore 870-13613. And if you enter on this, executing this report. So in, in this particular report also, we have to put some parameters for executing the report. So it will take a couple of small uh, more time. Now again the same parameter but the output will be different. So let's execute this report. So once executed you can see now within the same report you will find the cost element as well as the cost center. In first line there is a cost center. So cost center 110000 it is production has an ordered settlement of this much. And then the, again the same cost center has got this cost element the same cost center has got this cost element then the next cost center that is admin has started so it has been following by cost center and element cost center and element so you can see that the same cost center of production has ten thousand dollars as actual cost whereas in the same part the purchase that is the purchase account that is the purchase account expense or the cost element has also booked the same similarly for the production cost center there is 30,000 of salary distribution and in the cost salary account also there is 30,000 of cost element distribution so this is how it can be done even if you want you can collapse it from over here so as to have a lesser amount or you can collapse it to cost element level as well so once you collapse this all what it shows you is it shows you the report on the basis of cost element only but if you expand it it will give you the cost center as well so it gives you the bifurcations of cost element as well as the cost center together in the same report so that is this report all about then the next report again is cost center and period wise report so in this particular report we can execute the 614 it is all in a sequence from 611 612 613 614 so we'll execute this report now and you can the, again the selection screen will be same as a parameter but the output will be different again in this you will find the output on the basis of different period to period wise
so now we can execute this report so we can move to execute you have to fill the controlling area fiscal year and then the period for which you want to execute so now over here you cannot take from in two period you need to take period at a time so suppose I take it for period 10 and I execute this report so as you can see the report executed on the screen the layout of this of the report is on the system it shows you the date on which it has been executed the pages of the report user ID requested by controlling area the period for which the report has been executed in the fiscal area the plan version is zero now moving down the report paste down you can see the transaction data on the screen on the one side you will find the plan data for the period 10 the variance in the period and you can find the different cost element on the screen that means the different expenses which has been incurred against which the plan data plan cost has been maintained on one side on the right hand side on the left hand side you will find on the right hand side it only shows you the detail of actual period 10 and planned period 10 for which we have executed whereas on the right hand side you will find the detail related to the whole period that is 1 to 10 it uh, is the accumulated value of the actual cost incurred and the plan cost which has been maintained as you can see on the screen and the variance has been reflected to you on the screen as well so it gives you the report a detailed report on the basis of the period with respect to the cost elements and the cumulated actual cost and the plan cost from the first period till the period uh, for which the report has been executed as on the screen so this is how this period report for cost center and period wise reporting has been executed similarly you can post more and more data within the same cost center you can maintain certain plan value in that you can maintain you can post certain transactions actual transactions with the transaction FB 50 with respect to the cost center and you will see that the actual cost incurred will be reflected to you and the plan value will also be reflected and you can have an analysis of the variance on that as well so this is how you will be executing this report now moving up to the next report is uh, financial statements that is F.01 even you can make your comparisons of financial statement with respect to the uh, the cost incurred in the planning the plan cost with uh, in the financial statement which gives a, a basic overview to the management that how they are incurring the cost and how far or what is the overspending on the cost or what is the uh, under underspending on the respect to the cost has been done with the transaction f.01 so let's execute the transaction f.01 enter you need to take the cost of accounts the company code and then you have to take the fiscal year version over here and now you can go to ALV grid control so you can see the parameters this uh, you must have executed if you have uh, been uh, working on the SAP FI module as well so you need to put the chart of account company code fiscal year st financial statement version then the reporting year year 1 to 2 comparison year and you have to take care that this plan version you have to take so you can select the plan version from the list of different versions as on the screen so what we need to take is the plan version 0 has to be taken so that is what we have selected now we can move on to execute the report so once you execute the report ok enter so you can have a look of different screen over here these are the absolute values and there is no plan value as of now in this screen so let's check with the other version so 
So we've taken the second one planning version as one. Let's execute this. So there is no planning version as of now in this part. This can be taken up just for the financial statement. So we can leave this financial statement part as this has nothing to do with the cost center accounting and comparisons. So this is how you can execute this different transactions and different reports in the SAP system and you can you can have an look and uh, how these reports are executed how this variance analysis different reports as we have checked is helpful for the management in different perspective for understanding different different scenarios and the management decision making part so this is all about the cost center accounting now we are done with the cost center accounting we have covered the cost center actual part in the in the last training session and today we have covered the cost center planning where we can go for the planning of the cost as well as the actual cost and the comparisons are done at the end of the period or a particular quarter on a year to year basis so we'll see you in the next training session with a new topic we'll take care thank you